Jeff Jantz here at Jancer Studios. So I haven't posted a video in a while because I've actually been really busy building puppets and miniature sets as commission jobs and I haven't really been able to post behind the scenes on those. But I wanted to take a little break from all that to do something fun for Halloween. So I just built this little guy. He's going to be part of my Halloween costume. I've always really wanted to figure out a way to build something where I could hold a puppet in like a little box. So that way you can't really tell that I'm holding a puppet. Does that sound like a good idea to you? So I thought other puppeteers might be interested in making something like this. Maybe they could use it for a Halloween costume or a live performance. So I'm going to show everyone step by step how I'm going to make this thing. So that way people can try to figure out a way to make their own version too. I'm going to use a plastic tub for my box. You could probably use a cardboard box too, but I like to be complicated. The tricky part's going to be cutting the holes. So I'm just going to take a razor blade and score it a few times, making multiple passes. I like to use my finger as a guide. Now whether you're using a plastic box or cardboard, I would recommend you don't cut it right on the corner. You want to come in a little bit from the edge because if you cut a box right on the edge, it's just going to make the whole thing really flimsy. I just got to do a few passes here and then it'll finally cut through. There we go. So I'm just going to sand down the edges real quick. If you don't have a rotary tool or if you just can't stand the sound of a rotary tool, you can just use regular sandpaper. So I have a large hole all the way through the back of the box and a small hole through half of the bottom. Now I could just use a regular old plain old box, but I really want to do something to make mine look a little bit, I don't know, more fancy. I want to play up the science fiction theme. So I'm just going to bolt on a few things, and I tried to pick things that are pretty easy to put on because I didn't want to turn this part of the project into a whole thing. So I want to make sure that these things don't come loose or fall off or even pull through. So I'm just going to use a washer and a nylock just to make sure it stays put. This is a cheap stepping drill from Harbor Freight and it works really great on plastic to make really round holes. And it's pretty great because you can get multiple sizes all in one bit. So this little thing just snaps right into place but I just had it laying around my shop and I don't even know what it's actually for. But it looks kind of cool. So I'm just going to glue this thing in with a little bit of E6000. This stuff works really well on this type of plastic and it, well, it kind of sticks to just about anything. But it's nice because it also stays flexible. I'm going to let this cure and get started on the fake arm and hand. The hand ended up being easy because I found this one and it looks close enough to my actual hand. I'm just going to have to paint it. I'll use this as a primer because it says it also bonds to plastic. Then I'll use some basic craft paint to try to match up the flesh tone as close as I can. To make the arm, I'm going to use some EVA foam. But we're also going to need secret ingredients. Plastic wrap and duct tape. I'll explain more in a minute. But first, I gotta cut this thing off because it's kind of grossing me out. Let's fast forward this so we don't have to look at it for very long. Gross. I'm gonna get a base coat on this and set it aside for a while. Okay, so remember how I was telling you we're gonna be using plastic wrap? Well, now it's time for that. This is a trick I learned from some cosplayers on YouTube. And I've actually used this once to do foam armor for a commission job, and it works pretty good. Basically what we're gonna do is wrap my entire arm in saran wrap. It works a little bit easier if you have somebody else to help you, but I'm on my own today. So we're just gonna make this work. Okay, so now that I have my whole arm covered in plastic wrap, now it's time to put a layer of duct tape all over the whole thing. It's best to use small pieces so that you don't get a whole bunch of wrinkles. This part takes a while, but it's important to take your time and do one little piece at a time. It kind of seems like it takes forever, but it gets done eventually. Don't worry, I'll put it back in fast forward for your sake. We don't want you getting too bored and clicking off and watching somebody else's YouTube video. 
Okay, last spot. Okay, so now that the whole thing is covered in duct tape, it's time to draw some lines on here, cut it off, and then use that to create a pattern for the EVA foam. Missed a spot. Ooh, that's cold. Okay, it doesn't look like much yet, but it will. Okay, so here's what we have right now. Basically what we have to do is figure out how to take this 3D shape, cut it out enough to where we can turn it into a flat pattern. First, we'll start by cutting off all the stuff that we don't need. I probably should have done this before I cut it off my arm, but I want to make sure that I add some registration marks. I can still use the duct tape to kind of figure out where things would connect from one side to the other. So I have some lines here where the elbow is, kind of comes around where the bend in the arm is. So I'm also going to add some registration marks there and then cut that apart. I want to try to keep the curve nice and smooth. And because there's a little bit of a bend here in the elbow, I'm going to create a dart right there. So when I first started pattern making, I was having trouble figuring out where exactly to put the seams. And the truth is, there's not really just one right way to do that. There's hundreds of different ways you could do that. But what I try to think of is, how do I cut a line across here so that I can lay this piece as flat as possible. It's sort of like reverse engineering. That might be close enough. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat because we'll be able to curve the EVA foam a little bit. Sometimes I'll start with just trying to cut a dart and see if that's, if that's going to work. It looks like I have quite a bit of a curve along this back part of the arm. So I'm going to just kind of follow that and make that my line. So I'll cut off the back part of the upper arm and we'll see how it lays. And it's pretty flat. So now we'll work on the front part of the upper arm and there's this big huge curve here and I think it's just gonna be best to cut right up into that dart that I started with from the beginning. And it's pretty flat, except for this little curve in the shoulder. So we'll add one little dart there and I think that's gonna work. I decided I want to add a couple more darts to the forearms, just to get them to lay a little bit flatter. Look what I made! Isn't this amazing? Okay, maybe not really. But now it's time to lay it out on the EVA foam. And this is where we'll kind of start to see the magic start to happen. So as you're tracing it out, you just kind of hold it steady and make sure that it doesn't wiggle and move around. Also, you want to make sure that you don't forget to transfer over your registration marks. I try to keep the pieces pretty close because I really hate wasting materials. So you can cut this stuff with scissors, but I don't recommend it. I'm only using it for my rough cut and then I'm going to go back in and cut it a little bit cleaner afterwards. You can see here that the scissors leaves the edges really rough and that doesn't make for such a good seam when you glue it together. Most people like to use a blade like this. But I prefer a little more power. I think the bandsaw is a great way to cut this stuff, but if you're using a blade that works fine too, you just have to make sure that you keep the blade really, really straight so that it's not crooked, otherwise it won't glue together right. The best way to get this stuff to stick together is to use contact cement, but it smells terrible. So you want to do it outside or at least in a well-ventilated area and always wear a respirator. Strangely enough, contact cement works best when it's really, really thin. So you want to apply it with an old sponge or a scrap piece of foam 
and then wipe it down as thin as you can get it. You also have to apply it to both surfaces and then let it dry before you stick it together. It can be a little tricky figuring out how all this goes together, but one thing I did to make it easier for myself is I put a little triangle that points at all three pieces that connect to the elbow. So as long as I get that elbow straight, the rest of it should all come together the right way. This is something you really just have to take your time with. And try to get it to line up just right. Make sure you're checking those registration marks and lining it up as you go. Some curves come together a little easier than others, and some you really just have to wrestle with, like this one. Sometimes you have to work both sides and get it in there. As I'm putting this thing together, it's kind of hard to believe that this is really going to turn into my arm, but I'm pretty sure it's going to look right when it all comes together. Let's see, this is the last bit right here. And hey, I think this is it. Well, the shape came out good, but I just realized after I got it all put together that I bent it the wrong way, and now it's a right arm. I really wanted it to be a left arm. So I'm going to see if I can pull it all apart, heat up the foam, and bend it back the other way. I think I'll be able to heat it up and flip it inside out just like this. Let's give it a shot. It's probably still going to need some heat. But let's see what we can do. Maybe. This is a fairly large piece of foam, so it's taking a while to get it heated up, but it's coming along. I just gotta work it a little bit at a time. So I freshened up the contact adhesive. I think I'm gonna be able to make this work now. There we have it, a left arm. Okay, so now I'm going to heat seal the whole thing, and as I'm doing that, I'm just going to kind of refine the shape a little bit. You always want to heat seal your EVA foam really well because that kind of closes up the pores and helps make sure that the paint sticks a little better. Now I'm ready to cut a little slot out of this back part. So this is where it's going to kind of fit into my arm. I'm just going to take out a little bit at a time just to make sure I don't take off too much. It's a lot harder to put it back. All right, I think it's getting close. I'm gonna cut off a little bit more here. I think I just need a little bit more right in here. Just a sliver off of this side. I can feel it kind of rubbing against my arm. Hey, that's just right. All right, now I gotta get this thing in a shirt. I realized that this thing works best when you use a shirt that doesn't really stretch. So what I'm going to do is cut a slot right about here where the bicep is, and next, that's going to work. Now let's paint this creepy hand. So I'm going to use kind of a blend of different flesh tones, but I want to do several light coats. I'm going to start with the one that I think is the closest to the tone of my skin, and then we'll build it up from there. It's honestly already looking better, but while I let this dry, I'm going to get started on the arm. Maybe this is a little bit extra, but I did notice that you can kind of see some of the seams underneath the shirt. So I found that just basic kitchen and bath caulk works really well, and then I just use water on a paintbrush to kind of feather the edges and smooth it out with my finger, and it works pretty good for filling the seams. Sometimes you got to do two coats. I'm going to add a little pink to just certain parts of the hand and kind of blend that in a little bit just to give it some variance in color. I'm just going to use a slightly lighter flesh tone for the nails. I like to add high quality house paint to my paint when I'm painting EVA foam. I think that really helps it bond a lot better. Now I'm going to add a wash of water to the hand 
and then add a little bit of this tan color. But then I take a dry rag and wipe most of it back off and that leaves just a little bit of a tint and some detail in the crevices. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to hold this box in place while I'm operating a puppet. I was wondering the same thing. I found this little handy thing and I guess it's for a saxophone and it's got a little brace it goes on your stomach and it's adjustable and it's got this cool little hook and I think that if I bend this around a little bit tighter in the back you won't even notice it under the shirt. I think it's going to work out just right. The aluminum wire they put on this stuff is really stiff, but you can bend it with a really big pliers. There we go. Looking pretty good, even if I do say so myself. I drill a hole in the bottom center for the hook, and I think that's going to work just fine, but it's going to take a little more than that. So I'm going to drill out an oblong hole at the top, and then cut it kind of a little bit funny so I can slide the hook through and then stick this top part of the harness through here. But I still need to figure out how to secure it just a little bit better than this. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna have to admit the fact that I cut way too much out of the back of this thing. I don't need that much space for my arm to go through. So I'm just gonna put some of this plastic back. So I got a lot more options here on how to attach this thing. So I just took what I cut out, turned it the other way, and cut it so it'll fit. I'm gonna kind of glue it in from the inside. So I'm just gonna use trusty E6000 again to glue this back on, but I find it works best if you rough up the edges a little bit. So then we'll stick it on here, put some weights on it, and let it dry. Okay, I let this thing sit overnight. Let's see how it did. I think it's gonna hold up just fine. Okay, so now that I got a lot more plastic to work with, there's a pretty simple solution here. I'm just gonna drill some holes and throw it on with some zip ties. We'll clip those off and call it good. It's gonna work. As far as attaching the hand goes, I think I'm just gonna drill some holes in here and then use some short screws to screw it in from the inside. Okay, so after a few attempts, I finally got the hand on there just right. That was actually a lot more difficult than I expected to get it on in just the right place so that it looked realistic and so that the shoulder still lined up in just the right spot. You can see on the inside all my attempts there where there's a couple of extra holes, but I think they're going to be in spots where you're not really going to notice them anyways. This is what it looks like in the end. An arm sticking off to the left side. There's a hole in the back here. That's where my left arm will actually go through to operate the puppet. Also this hole on the bottom. This thing worked out really great. I would definitely recommend using something like this, especially for only, I think it was about $18 on Amazon. I'll put a link below in case anybody wants to order one of these. The other thing that turned out to be a little more difficult than I thought was putting this thing on. So the best way is to get your left arm through the sleeve and then through the hole first. Then you get the harness on and the shirt around that and then buttoning it up. But, uh, well, it's really hard to get buttons on with one hand. The only thing left to do now is practice your puppeteering. I'm super happy with how this turned out. I mean, the shoulder blends in pretty good and the arm just looks really realistic. And I think one of the things that really sells it is the elbow. Now I could have easily pulled this off with some swimming pool noodles and some foam and it probably would have looked okay but I really like how realistic it looks. I think it really sells it. If you found this video helpful please uh, hit that like button down there and uh, also I would really love to see what you guys come up with if you try this so post some pictures on Instagram and tag us at Jancer Studios and we'll see you in the next video. Okay.